I give you a pill, a chemical poison. I tell you what these are. And then what happens? You are happy. I have taken the pill. I have taken it from Dr. Bhushan, who is a very good doctor. Your blood pressure comes down. Why does the blood pressure come down? One scientist tried to find out. What did he do? He had a chip made. It's called the MIT chip. Mitochondrial chip. And this chip can track the drug if you tag it on. Wherever the drug goes, it tags it. So he gives the drug, tags it onto the chip, and then follows it. And he found that every reductionist chemical drug that he used was accepted first, goes into the stomach. The body's wisdom says, oh, this is how, I have not seen it. My forefathers have not seen it. My generation has not seen it. It must be a poison, so it must be eliminated, goes to the river. So every drug that you take from A to Z first goes to the liver, and the liver tries to destroy it. That is why after every drug, 24 hours to 48 hours later, you treat your liver function test, it's altered. Then, sometimes the liver cannot destroy the whole thing. Some of it comes out, which is called first pass effect. This first pass effect was known to us even when I was a pharmacology student. But our professors didn't know what is first pass effect. Now we know what it is. Now then what we do, that is not enough. So we, have, we now know pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics. So we give more dose, more dose, more drug. And all these do what is called adverse drug reactions, ADR. So mind you, every drug has an adverse drug reaction. Every drug may not be useful to you, but every drug has an adverse drug reaction. That's why I can't this phrase, while there is no pill for every ill, there is an ill following every pill. It's absolutely true. It's out of experience. Long experience, I have said, for every pill, there is an ill. So I tell doctors, tell the patient before you give a tablet, two things, A, N and T, B, ADR. N and T is number needed to treat, because all our drugs are statistically significant. Not useful for everybody that you give. Supposing I give you a drug like statin, let us say. The NNT is 300, which means 1 in 300 people whom I prescribe statin will get benefit. So some of us, you know, are fanatics, they say, okay, 1 in 300 chance I'll get benefit out of statin, I'll take it. Then tell him what is the ADR risk, 5 percent. That means 299 people who take the drug unnecessarily have 5 percent risk of almost dying. So now look at the whole balance. One patient gets benefit, 299 don't get benefit, 6 into 299 is about 18, 17 people, 17 people die. So in the balance, I have given statin to 300 punites, and I can be very certain of benefit for one person. And I am absolutely certain of harm to 17 people. Nice, isn't it? Now the largest study of antihypertensive drugs in the, what is called the MRC, mild to moderate hypertension study, which is published in 1985, showed NNT for antihypertensive drugs is 850 to benefit one patient with the fond hope of stroke or heart attack avoidance in the next five years. I am harming 850 people unnecessarily. And there, of course, the ADR risk is 2%, which means 8.5 into 2 is 16 people. 16 people will die in the next five years. One man might be saved, might be saved. What is the balance? If you know all this, will you take these drugs? Now you can study this study, MIT study, mitochondrial study, write down. Mitochondria as chi, chi means energy. Mitochondria as chi, C-H-I. In Chinese language is energy. And the man is, the man's name is Wallace, W-A-L-L-A-C-E, D.C. Wallace, Douglas C. Wallace. He is a professor of genetics in Washington University. And the article is in a journal called Genetics. 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 Okay? Year is 2004. I'm sorry, 2008. Volume is 179. And page is 727. Please read this. All these articles are free eh? in the internet. Read that. And go and read it. It's a 10-page article. It will take at least two days to understand it. Because very complicated genetics in it. And very interesting message is, the Ayurvedic drugs which he tried, not from India, the Tibetan drugs, herbal drugs he tried, they were not having any one of these reactions. It goes inside and tags and gets digested, goes into the system, does good or doesn't do good, but doesn't harm. 
and doesn't go to the liver. So the liver is... Today we have an epidemic of what's called non-alcoholic cirrhosis, which I've never heard when I was a student in the 50s. Only alcoholics used to get cirrhosis. Now ordinary people, anybody goes to the doctor and says, slight touch of fatty liver. My God, I get about 100, 150 consultations, free consultations, the email every day. Half of it is fatty liver. I went for a checkup. I have a fatty liver. And for a change today, I had a Delhi University professor, senior professor, who wrote to me. Professor Egde, I'm getting, coming to 65. I have not seen a doctor so far. My wife pesters me every day, I must have a checkup. Do you think I must have a checkup? I was so happy. I said, don't have a checkup. <laughs> you, are, you are 65 because you didn't see a doctor. And you'll be 100 if you're destined to be 100. If you go to a doctor, there's a good possibility that you'll not see the 67th birthday. <laughs> Delhi University professor, he said, I have kept my records, roughly, from the age five, I remember, till today. I might have spent about 100 rupees to the doctor. Can you believe that? Delhi University professor, senior professor. I was so happy for a change. After a number of years, I'm getting this. Because everybody says, I have not had a checkup. I have not had a checkup. Somebody asked, did you have a checkup? I said, I have not had a checkup. But I don't tell them that. You know? Because I always believe in Ayurveda. The Ayurveda has a beautiful definition of health. What is the definition of health in the Western medicine? 1947, alma mater definition. Absence of physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, environmental, this, that, disease, disease, disease. Which means it's a business definition. It was done with the business purpose. If you want to know you're healthy or not, you must go to the doctor. Which means you must go for a checkup. It's a good business, isn't it? See, checkup is the biggest business. You don't know that? Read this editorial in the BMJ called The Screening Industry. Screening Industry, written by the editor himself, Richard Smith. You say Richard Smith, BMJ, Screening Industry, it'll come up. And the fascinating article where he shows that screening is uh, very simple. You're all mathematicians, Pune, intelligent people. We don't have anything called normal in the human body. We don't know what's normal in the human body. We know average. Average, everybody knows. But normal, we don't know. So how do we arrive at the average? 1,000 people who measure, let us say, height. 1,000 people. And put a cow, Gaussian, Gaussian distribution, like a bell. And we put the mean plus two standard deviation. I don't know what it means. It means mean. And that mean is transferred automatically into normal. What is the normal height of Indian male? 5.4 plus minus 2. 4.5 is also normal. 6.2 is also normal. But they automatically become abnormal. It's called false positive. So for every one measure that you do, you get about 25 to 50 false positives. Supposing you go for a checkup today, total body scanner, 500 parameters are checked. 500 into 25. Don't want 5, 25. 5 percent. 525 is 2,500, isn't it? 100 people go for a checkup, 2,500 patients come out. Based on this, a very intelligent professor of medicine at Yale University asked one of our students, who is a patient? Do you know who is a patient? Good. Fantastic. The student gave the same answer. A man or a woman who goes to the doctor becomes a patient. The professor was shocked. She was a good girl, 52, and she had done her studies very well. She got shocked. Then she asked the doc, when does he become a man or woman again? Do you know what the student said? Rarely ever, if ever. <laughs> because today you go to a doctor, he says, take this pill. Sir, doctor, when I'm all right, I can. No, 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 no. Don't stop it. Blood pressure will go to the sky. Take it every day for the rest of your life. Finished. Who is finished? Patient is finished. Drug company benefits. This is our practice of medicine. It's called reduction in science. You remember the bird coming in is cancer. And tablet going in is science. So this kind of a science, ah, please, before I forget, none of you go home and stop your medicines. Eh? <laughs> what I am giving is not the prescription. It's only story. If you want to stop your medicine, and if you feel you're fine, please go back to your own doctor who has prescribed the medicine and discuss with him. No harm done. Ask your doctor two questions. Doctor, this pill you are given, no? What is the NNT of this pill? If your doctor knows the NNT, then you can talk to him. If he doesn't know, he has not heard of the NNT, then no, he's talking to him. You ask him, what is the NNT, doctor, and what is the ADR? Two things only you have to ask. Every pap pap tablet that he prescribes, there is an NNT, there is an ADR. And if you don't know, don't worry about it. 
right? But nobody stops at home. Eh? This one fellow wrote to me the other day. I heard your lecture in uh, Bombay and I have stopped my, I, my blood pressure is normal. I stopped my blood pressure, that pill, and, and I'm continuing to measure it's normal. But when I went to my doctor, he shouted at you and me together. And he said, both of us are fools. I said, for no fault, you got one more enemy. <laughs> So, because I didn't know who this man is, he heard my lecture somewhere. So after that, I'm warning all the people, I'm not, this is not a prescription, this is only an information. I'm not your doctor, you're not my patient. Did you understand that? Okay, come back to what we were saying. Now what happens? You may wonder, what is this fellow talking about? We all get benefit when we go to the doctor, don't you? Whether he gives the drug rightly or wrongly, also you get benefit. Then investigations happened as to why this happens. Four universities came into the picture like Bhushan. There's a professor of medicine in, in uh, Oxford, very bright young man like Bhushan. He almost looks like Bhushan. His name is Professor Bingel. He had four universities, Oxford, Cambridge, Munich, and, and uh, one more, uh, one more university. So four of these universities did a study on tablets, drug, drug effect on patients. What they did was they took volunteers, produced severe pain in them. You can produce pain very easily. What is the best treatment for pain? Best, huh? Pain, all, all are killers, they are not pain killers. What? No, no, best conventional treatment. Morphine. Morphine. Paracetamol won't kill the pain. Aspirin doesn't kill the pain. Aspirin kills the man. Morphine. Morphine, you agree? Anybody doesn't agree? Everybody agrees? No, they gave a morphine drip to the patient. But told the patient, this is not morphine, this is a new vitamin we have found out, vitamin B17, lateral, which will cure your disease, may not take your pain out. Would you believe 88% of the people with the morphine running intravenously did not have pain relief? Did you mark my words? Then they crossed over, the same patient, took the other side, produced a pain, started a saline drip, and told the patient, this is the latest salt of morphine. Very, very effective. Your pain should go like that. And everybody's pain went. Did you get that? Then the, oh, the researchers were nonplussed. What's happening? Then did a concurrent fMRI and repeated the whole study again. Do you know what it showed? When the patient believed, mark my words, believed his doctor and had faith in the doctor, their brain slept. Nothing happened. Pain didn't go. When the patient believed the doctor, the four brains started functioning so powerfully that it produced very powerful opioids which killed the pain. In short, your pain relief or your disease relief comes from your own body. That's what Bhushan said a little while ago. Your own body treats your own disease. And that is why you are made like that with a wonderful doctor built into you. He has no degree, but he's built into you so that you are not made and sent here thinking that the doctors will come, Pune will have you know, so many, yeah, this clinic, that clinic, five-star hospital, all corporate monstrosities, but you are sent here to say that you live as long as you live unless something adverse happens. So your own immune system keeps you going. Did you understand that? 